Hey everyone, my name is Josh Richens and I am from the channel Josh Richens Producer here on YouTube. But today I'm at Weiss Advice and that's WeissAdvice.com. If you saw my last video on this channel, you would have seen me breaking down a production for a song called One Love by an artist called GMX. Now that the whole pipeline for that song was we had a producer called Felatimo send over the original track, which was kind of a rough um, demo track. I then cleaned up that production and did a little bit more production on top. We structured the song out to fit the vocals that GMX had. We then did a vocal production over the top of that. I then mixed the song and we sent the song off to be mastered at Studios 301 by Ben Feggins through the online mastering services that Studios 301 offer. Now my original idea for this video was that I wanted to go back and have a look at that master that I got back from Studios 301 because I really liked it. It was a master that I loved when I got it back and I wanted to see what was better about the master uh, than my original pre-master that I had sent to 301. This got a little bit tricky when I started to compare the two and I realized they were a lot closer than I thought they were going to be. And this brought up a lot of really interesting questions for me about what is it we're looking for from mastering engineers and ultimately why do we go to mastering engineers? And so this is where I want to point out that today isn't going to be so much a lesson, but I want to open up a conversation around this. I kind of realized a few things that I thought were interesting and I want to know what your take is on it as well. So like I said, I wanted to compare the pre-master that I sent to Studios 301 to the master that I got back from Studios 301. And the way I wanted to do that was by level matching the vocal. So I was going to get my master, bring the volume of my master down so that the vocal was at the same level as uh, my pre-master. And that was going to serve as the barometer for everything else where I could... Uh, you know, hear the differences a little bit more clearly. Say the music or the sides was a bit louder. If that vocal's sitting at the same spot, then that should be a really clear difference when I'm jumping backwards and forwards between the two tracks. So to do that, I had to take off 6.34 decibels, which you can see right here on my master track down here. On my pre-master, one thing I did to try and match these a little closer is I added FGX2, which is a limiter. And in FGX2, I added that 6.34 decibels of gain and then I also just engaged constant gain monitoring. So let's have a listen to our master. Many, many, many years ago. Oh, yeah. don't tell where we don't do. And now our pre-master. Many, many, many years ago. Oh, yeah. You don't tell where we don't do. So pretty obviously things are sounding very, very close. Uh, I wanted to be able to hear the difference a little bit better. And so I started skipping backwards and forwards like this. Many, many, many years ago. Oh, yeah. Many, many, many years ago. Oh, yeah. You don't tell where we don't. Many, many, many years ago. Oh, yeah. You don't tell where we Super duper close. So the next thing I wanted to check was one of the transitions into the chorus where we were going to get a big difference in our dynamics. It gets a fair bit louder into the chorus. And I also know from having done the mix that things widen up a fair bit. And so I wanted to see if they had done anything in the master to handle that stuff or if they had just kind of let it ride. <laughs> And so it was about here that I started to feel a little bit ripped off. I was asking myself, had my mix just been put through a limiter and sent back to me? To check this a little bit more, what I've done is over here, I've kept those same two tracks, everything is as level matched as I, have, as I could get it, and I've tried to line these up so that they are as phase coherent as possible. I've even come in and just done some scooting around in the milliseconds area to see if I can get them to 
to fit together a little bit more. And what I wanted to do was flip my phase out at 180 to see how they canceled against each other. So let's have a listen to that. So you can hear there that there is something going on in the upper mids. The next thing that we're able to do now that I have these two tracks lined up against each other like this, is I can come back over here. I'll unflip my phase. Doesn't make the biggest difference. But now I'm going to mute out the master. We'll start with the pre-master. And I can flip between the two of these. Keep an eye over here for the little mute button as it's just going to flick between the two as I press M on my keyboard. And keep an ear out for those upper mids. See if you can hear the difference in that kind of area. Mostly on the vocals is where I'm hearing it. So I'll play that back for you now. Many, many, many years ago oh, yeah. You don't tell where we don't they go oh, yeah. To that promised land to rendezvous oh, yeah, yeah. We don't stop this fight, you don't they go uh, let me skip into the chorus. I think it's a little easier to hear in the chorus once there's a lot of vocals going on and there's a lot more top end. So there is a little bit more going on in the master than I originally thought there was. Made me feel a little bit more comfortable. All right, so onto my conclusions from all of this, and this is where I wanna know what you think as well. But one of my takeaways is that mastering isn't there to fix your mix, which sounds really obvious, but sometimes those obvious lessons are only truly learnt through experiences like this here. I'm sure you've heard the adage about hiring a mastering engineer so that you can get another set of ears over your mix. And I think that there's value in that, but I think the value is in actually being able to get mix notes that you can address before it goes to mastering. I also think it's really easy to take that same adage as meaning a good mastering engineer will address issues within your mix during the mastering stage. I think I even believed that maybe up until right now. What I'm learning, though, is that the masters I've loved that I've gotten back are the ones that didn't address issues in my mix. And that feels kind of counterintuitive. For instance, I think the low end in this mix could be better. It's not that it needs to go up or down, but I think the, the kick and the bass could probably play together a little bit better. They may be clashing a bit here. And if the mastering engineer was to take it upon themselves to try and fix that, they're not just going to be affecting the low end with whatever processes they use, they're going to be affecting the whole mix. And those changes will show up differently on different systems. And for someone like me who worked on the song, hearing little changes from system to system is going to sound like not translating. It's, it's going to come off to me like the mix doesn't translate from system to system because things are out of place on different systems. Am I crazy? Let me know in the comments. I'm really curious to, pe to hear what people think about this topic. Uh, you know, I'm not a mastering engineer, so if you are, please chime in in the comments below. And even if you're not a mastering engineer, I wanna know what you think. Am I wrong? Do you like the master that I got back? Or do you think it should be better and that I got ripped off? That's all for this one. So if you like it, remember, give the video a thumbs up. Tell me what you think in the comments. I do really want to know what people think about this one. Uh, I think it's super interesting. I wasn't expecting this. I thought the video was going to be something completely different. Also, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification if you want to see more videos like this. And as always, you know what we say. We are musicians. Sound is our instrument. Catch you next time.